for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also, king of Salem, which is, king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. In the introduction of Melchizedek, we discovered that the Bible doesn't give us any meaningful information about Melchizedek. The only information given to us in the Bible about Melchizedek is that he was the king of Salem and the priest of the Most High. Despite Melchizedek being a prominent figure in the journey of the Most High reconciling us back to him, very little was mentioned of him in the scriptures in the Bible. I believe the workers of iniquity purposely left out vital information that can silence the speculations about the identity of Melchizedek, the Most High, the Messiah, and the Israelite nation to cause confusion. Remember, the Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. The spirit of confusion will cause the people to never come to the knowledge of the truth. The people will fight among themselves about what they believe is factual. In the meantime, the workers of iniquity who hide the truth can create their own interpretations of the scriptures. Once the synagogue of Satan get you to fight among yourselves, they will come to you as the voice of reason and give you a solution that is contrary to the word of the Most High. Because many people operate in the flesh, they will believe the voice of the workers of iniquity in religion. Most people will allow the workers of iniquity to have the final say about what they believe. Israelites, the Most High should have the final say in what you believe. Don't put your salvation in the hands of men. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit for a reason. Utilize the help of the Comforter, the Most High sent to guide you into all truth. The flesh cannot understand spirit. That is why there is conflict between the flesh and the spirit. If Israelites could understand the truth about the battle between flesh and spirit, you will look within for everything you want to know about the Father and His creation. Remember, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or Lo there, or behold, the kingdom of God is within you. As the Most High unmasked the prominent figures in the scriptures with truth, don't let the Satans through their disciples, still the good seed the Most High is planting in you. Remember, the disciples of Satan are followers of Jesus Christ, who is the God of this world. The scriptures made it known that the God of this world is the prince of this world, whom many of you know as Lucifer or Satan. Don't be deceived by religious doctrines. Allow the Most High to reveal truth to you. It was prophesied that our knowledge would increase in the last days. Israelites, don't let the Satans come and steal the good seed the Most High is planting in you. The Satans will send the spirit of unbelief to derail you from the truth to keep you bound to their lies. It's very important that you put on the whole armor of the Most High to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Israelites, don't let anyone make decisions for you. Allow the Most High to transform you by renewing your mind. All of us have heard the speculations surrounding Melchizedek. Because of the lack of information in the scriptures about Melchizedek, the people allowed their imaginations to form its own narrative about Melchizedek. Israelites, it's important that you allow the scriptures to speak. Know that the Satans can insert their wild imaginations into your mind. Anything that goes against the laws of the Most High, as well as thoughts that encourage you to sin and cause offenses, are not of the Most High, but of the Satans. 
That is why you should cast down the wicked imaginations that rise against the knowledge of the Most High. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Over the years, I have heard who the people say that Melchizedek is. Some say he is Yahshua, others say he is Shem, and some people believe he is Michael. It's unfortunate that until this day, there's a lot of speculation of who the prominent figures in the scriptures are. With religious leaders proclaiming to be a mouthpiece for the Most High, and they say they hear from the Most High, until this day, they can't confirm anything. They have no knowledge. How can religion be the path that leads to the Most High on the earth? The religious leaders of this world don't know the Most High, nor do they serve the Most High. Until this day, everyone have a different opinion of who they believe Melchizedek was. The words of the Most High are alive and powerful. Anything we want to know, we should find in the word. Because religion is not of the Most High, but of the Satans, you will never know the truth following religion. The truth is not in the workers of iniquity. The scriptures let us know that Satan is the father of lies. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The same Satan that the scriptures say is the father of lies, he is also the Roman prince. The Roman God is who many Israelites in and out of the awakening serve. The scriptures just said the Roman prince is the father of lies. Are you going to continue to follow Rome's doctrines? Israelites, know that the synagogue of Satan and the spiritual wickedness in high places will never tell you the truth. Don't depend on them and their doctrines for truth. The name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Malki means king and Zedek means righteousness. When it comes to the people the Most High show himself strong through, their names reveal a lot about them. Melchizedek was the king of righteousness in the generations he lived. He was the mouthpiece of the Most High until the Most High called Abraham. According to the scriptures in the book of Hebrews, in the Bible, Melchizedek had no father or mother. He had no beginning of days or end of life. He was a priest continually for the Most High. The third book of Adam and Eve revealed that Melchizedek was the great grandson of Shem. Melchizedek's father was Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, who is the son of Shem. O oh, my son, when thou art about to die, command thy firstborn son Shem to take Melchizedek, son of Canaan, and grandson of Arphaxad, for that Melchizedek is priest of the Most High God and to take with them the body of our father Adam from within the ark, and remove it and lay it in the earth. The third book of Adam and Eve revealed that Melchizedek is the great-grandson of Shem. His father was Canaan. The book of Hebrews in the Bible said Melchizedek had no father and no mother. Israelites, it's one thing to not have an earthly father, but you will always have a father if you serve the Most High. The book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 22, confirm Arphaxad as the son of Shem. The children of Shem, Elam and Ashur and Arphaxad and Lud and Aram. The genealogy of the sons of Shem found in the book of Genesis doesn't give the account of all of the children the son of Shem, Arphaxad, had. The book of Genesis only gave us the genealogy to one of our Faxad son. The book of Luke in the New Testament confirmed Canaan's genealogy of being the son of our Faxad. Chapter 3 in the book of Luke is revealing the genealogy of the Messiah. Canaan, the father to Melchizedek, was listed in the Messiah's genealogy. Which was the son of Sarak, which was the son of Rago, which was the son of Phalek, which was the son of Heber which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Canaan, 
which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of No, which was the son of Lamech. The book of Genesis and the book of Luke confirmed the genealogy of Canaan, the father of Melchizedek. Israelites, now do you see why you have to look into other books to get the complete story of the characters in the scriptures? The workers of iniquity slander these books to keep you from reading them. If you stick to the 66 books of the Bible, you will never know the truth. Also, the Holy Spirit will begin to show you the alterations in the scriptures. The book of Hebrews said Melchizedek had no father and mother. What was the reason for the workers of iniquity to state that Melchizedek had no father and mother? I believe the workers of iniquity mentioned Melchizedek in the book of Hebrews to solidify exchanging money in the form of tithes in religion today. They made sure to mention that Abram gave Melchizedek tithes of everything just to show the people today that paying tithes in the form of money is mandatory. Did you notice the author of the book of Hebrews in the Bible didn't mention anything else? The author lied about Melchizedek not having a father and mother. The church associate ties with money. Ties in the generation of Abraham was mainly food, animals, and whatever you had that you wanted to offer to the Most High. The workers of iniquity made sure to say, give to Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is his. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Melchizedek was the youngest son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, who is the son of Shem. The Most High chose Melchizedek to stand before him to minister and to worship before the body of Adam. Because of the lack of information in the scriptures in the Bible, most people form their own conclusion to whom they believe Melchizedek was. Religion did nothing to stop the speculation, but increased the confusion to insert their narratives into the scriptures. Later in the unmasking of Melchizedek, you will understand why the scriptures in the book of Hebrews said Melchizedek had no father or mother, but a priest continually before the Most High. To those of you who believe Melchizedek was the Messiah, that is false. To the people who don't believe Michael is the Messiah, but believe Michael was Melchizedek, that is also false. I have heard of the miraculous birth story of Melchizedek. Black people always try to transform a person or an object into a god. The time has come for you to know that Melchizedek was the great-grandson of Shem, who is the son of Noah, whom the Most High chose. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. In order to understand the story of Melchizedek, you have to know what happened to Adam and Eve, as well as the complete story about the flood. The scriptures in the Bible doesn't discuss what happened to Adam and Eve after their fall. Religion made it seem as if Adam and Eve were forgotten by the Most High. Religion made it appear as if the Most High cast out Adam and Eve and never forgave them. Israelites, Adam was valued by the Most High. The Most High made the first man, Adam, in his image. The Most High loves Adam and Eve. Our first father and mother may not hold value to some of you because of their fall, which brought hardship to us as their children. The Most High valued Adam and Eve. It's unfortunate that in this generation, some Israelites have transformed Eve's name into a byword. These so-called Israelites who devalue Eve are just like their father, the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil, but the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Anyone who does the will of Satan is of Satan. So many proclaim to have returned to serve the Father, however their behaviors says otherwise. Israelites, let me warn you again, beware of Satan's ministers, by their fruits you will know them. Melchizedek ministry started after the death of Noah. In every generation, starting with Adam, there was a head of the household that ministered before the Most High to upkeep the laws of the Most High, as well as to do the will of the Most High on the earth. 
the holy angels help the head of the family to do the will of the most high the messiah before he became flesh he was known in the scriptures as the word of god or the angel of god the angel of god found in the books not included in the scriptures is equivalent to the character that is called the angel of the lord in the bible the word of god was with each person the most high chose to be the head of the family in their generation after the death of adam seth became the head of the family seth ministered before the body of adam after seth was his son enos after enos was canaan mahalalel jared enoch and etc when our father adam saw that his end was near he called his son seth who came to him in the cave of treasures and he said unto him o seth my son bring me thy children and thy children's children that i may shed my blessings on them ere i die when seth heard these words from his father adam he went from him shed a flood of tears over his face and gathered together his children and his children's children and brought them to his father adam then seth prayed over them and blessed them and adjured them by the blood of abel the just saying i beg of you my children not to let one of you go down from this holy and pure mountain make no fellowship with the children of cain the murderer and the sinner who killed his brother for ye know, O my children, that we flee from him and from all his sin with all our might because he killed his brother Abel. After having said this, Seth blessed Enos, his firstborn son, and commended him habitually to minister in purity before the body of our father Adam all the days of his life, then also to go at times to the altar which he, Seth, had built. And he commanded him to feed his people in righteousness and judgment and purity all the days of his life. After the death of Seth, Enos rose at the head of his people, whom he fed in righteousness and judgment, as his father had commanded him. After the death of Enos, Canaan stood at the head of his people in righteousness and innocency. As his father had commanded him, he also continued to minister before the body of Adam inside the cave of treasures. Then Mahalalel stood over his people and fed them in righteousness and innocency and watched them to see they held no intercourse with the children of Cain. Then Jared kept his father's commandment and arose like a lion over his people. He fed them in righteousness and innocency and commanded them to do nothing without his counsel, for he was afraid concerning them, lest they should go to the children of Cain. Then Jared turned to his son Enoch and said unto him, Thou, my son, abide in this cave and minister diligently before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life and feed thy people in righteousness and innocency. After the death of Adam, the word of God came to Seth and gave Seth instructions on what to do with the body of Adam. Seth laid the body of Adam in the cave. From that cave is where every head of the family ministered to their people. Adam's body, as well as all the fathers that were buried in the cave, was symbolic to a high place or a temple. That is how all the priests ministered to the people before the flood. They ministered before the body of Adam and all the fathers that was buried in that cave. The generation before the flood was aware that a flood was coming upon the earth due to the abominations of the people at that time. Jared was the head of the family during the time when the sons of God made it with the daughters of men. Only four of our fathers remain on the holy mountain when the sons of Seth sinned. Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Jared instructed Noah to take the body of Adam with him into the ark. And Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave, and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loin, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place when salvation shall come. Not too many people know that the body of Adam was on the ark. The Bible did not mention the body of Adam on the ark. The scriptures in the Bible focus on Noah building the ark. Once the ark was complete, the Most High gave Noah instructions of how many animals to take on the ark. 
The scriptures made sure to let us know that Noah's family and the animals was on the ark. The scriptures in the Bible failed to disclose that Adam's body was also on the ark. Adam instructs Seth to make sure that his body was taken on the ark. Because the scriptures in the Bible eliminated this information from us, that is why most people don't know who Melchizedek is and his purpose. If they told the story of Melchizedek, then they have to explain what happened to Adam and Eve. Since the workers of iniquity removed this information, they couldn't include the full life story of Melchizedek in the scriptures. All of our fathers before the flood ministered before the body of Adam when they became the head of the family to lead their people. After the flood, the Most High continued with this tradition. That is why the body of Adam was taken on the ark. The Most High gave Adam three glorious gifts, kingship, priesthood, and prophecy. These are the three glorious gifts which God made to Adam. The first is kingdom, wherein God made Adam king over his works. The second glorious gift is priesthood, in that God breathed into his face a spirit of life. And the third glorious gift is prophecy, for Adam prophesied concerning what God thought of doing. The order of Melchizedek is based on these three gifts. The Most High gave to Adam, kingship, priesthood, and prophecy. Once the flood came, everything on the earth was consumed. The Most High preserved Noah's family and the animals, as well as Adam's body that was also on the ark. The Most High wanted to continue in the tradition of having his anointed minister before the body of Adam after the flood. Jared said to Noah that the word of God would come to bury the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. And unto him of you who shall be left, O my sons, shall the word of God come, and when he goes out of this land, he shall take with him the body of our father Adam, and shall lay it in the middle of the earth, the place in which salvation shall be wrought. Then Noah said unto him, Who is he of us that shall be left? As you heard, the word of God would come to bury the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. Everyone in this generation know the word of God as the Messiah. If the Messiah will come to assist Shem in burying the body of Adam in the middle of the earth, how can Melchizedek be the Messiah? And Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave, and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loin, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place when salvation shall come. You heard for yourself of Jared prophesying that the word of God will come to take the body of Adam to bury his body in the middle of the earth. Then Jared said, Shem will take the body of Adam to bury it in the middle of the earth. In the flesh, Shem and Melchizedek will bury the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. In the spirit, the word of God will be there with them to assist them in the fulfilling the will of the Most High. The third book of Adam and Eve reveal Methuselah prophesying to Noah to instruct Shem to take Melchizedek with him to take the body of Adam from the ark and remove it to bury Adam's body in the middle of the earth. Oh, my son. When thou art about to die, command thy firstborn son Shem to take Melchizedek, son of Canaan, and grandson of Arphaxad, for that Melchizedek is priest of the Most High God, and to take with them the body of our father Adam from within the ark, and remove it and lay it in the earth. Methuselah prophesied to Noah that Melchizedek shall stand and minister on the mountain that is the middle of the earth before the body of Adam. This is what all of our fathers before the flood did. They ministered to the people before the body of Adam. Melchizedek was chosen to continue this tradition after the flood. And Melchizedek shall stand ministering on that mountain that is in the middle of the earth before the body of our father Adam forever. Methuselah confirmed what Jared prophesied to them about the angel of God who will go with them until they come to the place that is the middle of the earth where Adam's body would be buried. When Jared prophesied, he said the word of God would bury the body of Adam. 
Methuselah called the word of God the angel of God. In our generation, the angel of God is the angel of the Lord. Methuselah said also to Noah and to his sons, the angel of God will go with you until you come to that place in the middle of the earth. As you can see, Melchizedek is not the Messiah. Methuselah prophesied about the required garment Melchizedek should wear while ministering before the body of Adam. Methuselah also said that Melchizedek should be alone, praying and watching over the body of Adam. Again, Methuselah said to Noah, O my son, let him who ministers unto God and before the body of our father Adam have a clothing of skin and be girt about his loin with leather. Let him wear no ornament, yet let his raiment be poor. Let him be alone, fasting, and stand praying our Lord God to watch over the body of our father Adam, for it is a body of great value before God. And let him continue in his ministry, he, the priest of the Most High God, for he is well-pleasing unto God, and so is the ministry he fulfills before God. You heard the prophecies our fathers transferred from one generation to the next. Noah followed in the footsteps of his fathers and transferred the commandments he received to Shem. Like I said to you before, Israelites, this was a tradition that was kept by our fathers before the flood and after the flood. The testaments of the patriarch to the 12 tribes was the sons of Jacob's way of continuing in our father's footsteps and passing down the commandments and prophecy down from one generation to the next. That is how our ancestors preserved the writings of our fathers and the commandments and laws of the Most High. Our fathers did this in secret among themselves. Our fathers was able to preserve the prophecies and laws of the Most High in every generation. Once religion took over the earth, everything became distorted. Know, O oh my son, that from Adam until this day, every one of the ancients gave commandments to one of the rest at the time of his resting from the flesh, and that they taught these commandments among themselves. The first, O oh my son, who taught this commandment and made it plain was our father Adam. He gave it to his son Seth, who received it. Then Seth handed to his son Enos, who kept it, and Enos gave it to his son Canaan, who kept it. Then Canaan gave it to his son Mahalalel, who kept it, and handed it to his son Jared. And Jared kept it and gave it to his son Enoch, who also kept this commandment, and gave it to his son Methuselah, who kept it, and gave it to his son Lamech, who kept it, and who gave it to me, his son, and I have kept it. Yet my grandfather Methuselah also gave me a great commandment, which I have kept, and which I give thee likewise. So then receive my commandment, and hold fast my words, and hide this mystery within thy heart, yet reveal it not to one of all thy kindred. No one was allowed to go into the ark, for Noah locked the doors of the ark all of his days. Before the body of Adam was buried in the middle of the earth, Noah's family began to multiply on the earth. All of Noah's sons had children during the lifetime of Noah. Noah lived 350 years after the flood. The children of Noah started to multiply before they buried the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. Adam's body was buried in the middle of the earth after the death of Noah. Before the Most High anointed Melchizedek, the angel of God appeared to Melchizedek's father, Canaan, in a vision. Israelites, remember I said to you, majority of the scriptures are dreams and visions. The Most High speak to us in a vision and in dreams. Pay attention to your visions and dreams. The Most High did say in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and we would prophesy. The gift of prophecy is one of the gifts the Most High gave to Adam. And it shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Then they shall take my body and lay it in the middle of the earth, shortly after they have been saved from the waters of the flood. The angel of God in the book of Adam and Eve is the same as the word of God and the angel of the Lord. 
Israelites, I hope you're starting to see the many diverse roles the holy angels have. The angel of God came to Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, and asked him if he knew who he was. The angel of God identified himself as Michael to Canaan, the father of Melchizedek. Michael went on to say to Canaan that he stood with all of our fathers. After they had ended mourning for Noah, an angel of God appeared unto Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, and said unto him in a vision, Knowest thou me? And Canaan answered, No, my lord. Then the angel said to him, I am the angel whom God has sent unto thee to give thee this commandment, and transgress not the command of God. When Canaan heard this from the angel of God, he wondered and said unto him, Speak, O my Lord. And the angel of God said unto him, I am the angel who brought gold to thy father Adam when he was below the garden. I am the angel who prayed to God together with Adam when he offered his blood upon the altar. I am Michael, the angel who received the soul of Abel, the just. I am the angel who was with Seth when he was born in the cave. I am the angel who was with Enos and Canaan, and Mahalalel and Jared, and Enoch, and Methuselah and Lamech, and with Noah. Yet since he entered into rest, I stand by his firstborn son, Shem. And behold... God has sent me to thee to take thy son Melchizedek and to remove him to the land in which God shall lay the body of our father Adam and that he may be high exalted before God. Let not thy heart be grieved at his going away. When Canaan heard these words from the angel, he worshiped before him and said unto him, let the will of God be done. For those of you who thought Melchizedek was Michael, the scriptures you just heard revealed that Melchizedek couldn't be Michael. It was Michael that came to the father of Canaan to reveal Melchizedek's destiny. The same angel that appeared to Canaan also appeared to Melchizedek as well. The angel of God revealed to Melchizedek his calling and he anointed Melchizedek for his position as the priest of the Most High. Then the angel of God came unto Melchizedek that night while Melchizedek was lying in bed. And he appeared unto him in the figure of a youth like him, who smote him on the side and awoke him out of his sleep. The scriptures you heard said the angel of God came to Melchizedek while he was sleeping and woke him up. The scripture said this angel took on the appearance of a youth. The scriptures revealed that Melchizedek was a youth when the angel of God came to him to reveal his calling and to anoint him. As you can see, Israelites, the angels can take many forms to accomplish the will of the Most High. In this situation, the angel of God took on the appearance of a youth despite not being a youth. The time has come for you to expand your mind about the angels and their capability. They are not just ministering spirits and messengers. They can do many diverse things. This particular angel that spoke with Melchizedek is the angel you know as the word of God and the angel of the Lord. Many of you know the word of God to be the Messiah. When Melchizedek heard it, he stood up and saw the house full of light and a figure standing there. And he was afraid for he was not accustomed to see angels since he never had. Yet the angel prevented fear from overcoming him and anointed him on the head and on the breast. For Melchizedek was a youth of a perfect heart and said unto him, Fear not, I am an angel of God. And he has sent me to thee with this message that thou fulfill it unto God. Melchizedek then said unto him, What is that message? And the angel said unto him, it is that thou travel with the body of our father Adam unto the middle of the earth, and that thou stand ministering before it there, and that thou serve God, for he has chosen thee from thy childhood, for thou art of the seed of the blessed. The scripture said, Melchizedek is not accustomed to seeing the angels. I have read in other books of the archangel Gabriel coming to take Melchizedek to live in paradise until he grew and his ministry started. We just heard that can be true because Melchizedek is not accustomed to seeing the angels. The scriptures went on to say that the angels had to strengthen him so he wouldn't be afraid. 
the scriptures mentioned that Melchizedek had a perfect heart. Remember I said to you in the message of the unmasking of the rulers of the darkness of this world, that it's all about your heart. Those of us with a pure heart will see the Most High. The Most High will show himself strong through all the Israelites and non-Israelites whose heart is pure before him. Melchizedek had a pure heart, just like Abel, Seth, King David, and the countless others the Most High used mightily in the earth. Israelites, guard your heart. Melchizedek asked the angel who will help him bring the body of Adam to the middle of the earth. The angel that spoke with him said, Shem. Then Melchizedek said unto him, Who will bring the body of my father Adam and me with it unto the middle of the earth? And the angel said unto him, Shem, the son of Noah, thy father's grandfather. Then the angel strengthened his heart and comforted him tenderly and said unto him, Commit not these hidden words to any except to Shem only, lest the report of it is spread abroad. And they hang on to the body of Adam and not let it go to the land to which God has commanded to be taken. And the angel departed from him. Jared and all the fathers before the flood prophesied that the word of God would bury the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. When the time came for the body of Adam to be buried, the Most High sent the angel Michael. The angel that spoke with Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, he identified himself as Michael. He spoke with Shem, the son of Noah, to take the body of Adam and Melchizedek to place Adam's body where the Most High ordered. When they came to the ark, Shem couldn't open the door. Remember, Noah locked the doors of the ark. It was Melchizedek that opened the door. Once the door was opened, the Holy Spirit spoke through the body of Adam and confirmed Melchizedek's priesthood, the first created by the Most High in the world. Then came Melchizedek to the door when he heard Shem's voice and seized the padlock, and at once the door was opened. Yet a voice cried from within the ark and said, Rejoice, O thou priest of the Most High God. For thou, thou hast been found me to enter upon the office of priest of God, the first created by him in the world. This voice was from the Holy Spirit. Melchizedek and Shem marveled at the voice that spoke through the body of Adam. The scriptures identified the voice as the Holy Spirit. The scriptures went on to say that while they were perplexed by the voice, the word of God came to them and said, I made you priests and breathed my spirit upon you. The word of God went on to say, you are my righteous priests and you were found worthy to bear the body of Adam and I breathe my spirit into you. The word of God went on to say he made Melchizedek priest, king and a prophet. The word of God commanded Melchizedek to bring the body of Adam from the ark. Yet while they were wandering at the door of the ark, the word of God came that said, I am he that made thee priest and that breathed of my spirit unto thee. Thou art my righteous priest and thou art worthy to bear the body of Adam whom I created and unto whom I breathe of my spirit. And I made him priest and a king and a prophet. Go in first and bring out his body. The word of God was there with Shem and Melchizedek to do the will of the Most High concerning Adam. The scripture said when Melchizedek went to take the body of Adam, there was an angel that assists him with the body of Adam. Although most believe he's just a protector of the Israelites, but this angel happens to be everywhere the word of God or the angel of the Lord is supposed to be. Then Melchizedek went into the ark and bow in worship to the body of our father Adam. He blessed himself in it and brought it out, the angel Michael helping him the while to carry it. Michael assisting Melchizedek with the body of Adam. How can Michael only serve as the protector to the nation of Israel when the Israelites didn't exist during the time of Melchizedek? Could it be that Michael could be more than just our protector? You must seek the face of the Most High to get the answers. I can only show you the truth in the scriptures. The Most High through His Spirit must give you confirmation that comes with an absolute assurance. 
Michael helped Melchizedek with the body of Adam when taking his body from the ark. When Michael and Melchizedek took the body of Adam from the ark, the scriptures said they closed the door of the ark. Shem, Melchizedek, and the angel that assists them is now called the angel of God showed them the way to go. Then Shem and Melchizedek took the body of Adam and went on their way. And the angel of God went with them and showed them whither to go. It was prophesied before the flood by our fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Enoch, Mahalalel, Canaan, Methuselah, Noah, that the word of God would come to bury the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. Today, you have read in the scriptures that the angel Michael assists Melchizedek and Shem with the body of Adam. Melchizedek was a youth when he was called to the office of the Most High's priesthood. While Melchizedek and Shem was transporting the body of Adam, a voice came from the coffin and blessed Melchizedek. And it said the Most High didn't anoint anyone to the priesthood with his own hands except Melchizedek. Glory to God who create me, who gave me life, who made me die, and who again returns me to the earth out of which he took me. And the voice blessed the youth Melchizedek and said unto him, All of our race, God chose no one except thee. Neither did he anoint any one of them priests with his own hand except thee. In the scriptures you just heard, Adam glorified the Most High. Then Adam said, you gave me life and you returned me to the earth of which you took me. Israelites, this is very important. Remember in the book of Genesis, when the Most High judged Adam and Eve for transgressing the laws of the garden? One of the judgment against Adam from the Most High was that he would return to the ground that he came from. So the Israelites that are skeptical of Adam's body being on the ark, as well as Melchizedek returning the body of Adam to the earth, the Most High fulfilled the judgment he pronounced on Adam when he buried Adam in the earth. From dust you came to dust you shall return. Everything written must be fulfilled. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Israelites, know that a trial serve many purpose. You heard earlier in this message of the angel Michael anointing Melchizedek as priest. While Shem and Melchizedek was traveling with the body of Adam, the voice that came out of the coffin that had Adam's body said, Melchizedek is the only person, the most high anointed priest with his bare hands. Israelites, don't let this fly over your head. Remember, it was the angel Michael that anointed Melchizedek as priest. The truth shall make you free. Like I said to you before, I will point you to the truth. What you do with it is solely up to you. All of this took place when Melchizedek was 15 years old. Shem and Melchizedek with the angel of God journeyed to the place the Most High has assigned. This vision happened to Melchizedek in the 15 years of his age. Then Shem and Melchizedek put the coffin upon the donkey and went on their way and the angel of God went with them. And it was so that when they came to the rough places, the angel bared them up by the power of God and made them pass over them, whether they were lands or mountains. When Melchizedek and Shem reached the place where the body of Adam was to be buried in the earth, a rock split in half, Melchizedek and Shem knew that they have reached the place the Most High chose to bury Adam in the earth. The word of God sent one of his angels to strengthen the heart of Shem and Melchizedek. Then the angel laid the body of Adam in its place. All of our fathers prophesied that the word of God would bury the body of Adam in the middle of the earth. The scripture said an angel buried Adam, just as Michael buried the body of Moses. The angel instruct Melchizedek to take the bread and wine from Shem. The word of God instruct Melchizedek to take 12 stones to make an altar. Upon that altar, Melchizedek offered the bread and wine. Yet when the coffin reached the rock, 
the rock split asunder into two parts. That was the place for the coffin. And Melchizedek and Shem knew thereby that it was the place God had appointed. Then the angel came down from God in the figure of a man who appeared to Melchizedek and to Shem and strengthened their hearts. He then laid the body of our father Adam in its place and said to Melchizedek, Take from Shem the bread and the wine. Yet as the sun rose, the word of God came to Melchizedek and said to him, Arise and take twelve of these stones, make of them an altar, and offer upon it of the bread and wine that was with Shem, and offer them thou and he. Then when Melchizedek heard the word of God, he worshipped between his hands, and he hastened and did as God commanded him. The word of God went on to explain to Melchizedek the purpose of him building the altar and offering the bread and wine upon it. The word of God explained to Melchizedek that the 12 stones represent the 12 apostles that will become the pillar to the world. The word of God said to Melchizedek that just as he made an altar, he will make an altar in the world. In the same manner they offered bread and wine on the altar, he will offer his body and blood on the altar and make it to find forgiveness of sins. The word of God said the place where the body of Adam laid rest, he will make it a holy place. Then the word of God appeared to Melchizedek and said unto him, Behold, I have made thee priest, and thou and Shem shall offer this offering thou didst make first. And in like manner, as thou didst set up these twelve solid foundation stones, will I raise twelve apostles to be the pillar of the world, and they are firm. In like manner also, as thou didst make this altar, will I make thee an altar in the world. And like as thou didst make an offering of bread and wine, will I also present the offering of my body and blood, and make it to be unto forgiveness of sins. And this place on which thou art standing and in which the body of Adam is laid, will I make a holy place. All creatures on earth shall be blessed in it, and in it I will grant forgiveness unto all who come hither. Then the word of God blessed Melchizedek, named him priest, and then went up from him into heaven in glory and rejoicing with his angels. The Most High certainly made where he laid the body of Adam a holy place. This holy place we know today as Jerusalem. In order to know the story of Melchizedek, you have to know the story of Adam. Because the life of Adam and Melchizedek didn't make it into the scriptures in the Bible, the people don't know the complete story. Adam was the first man. The Most High didn't discard him. Israelites, that's why you must know what you worship. If you're going to associate yourself with religion, Know what you worship and their beliefs. Many of you know about the holy places, but you don't know the complete story. You don't know why the middle of the earth is important to the Most High. Let us go back to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews in the Bible said, Melchizedek had no father or mother, no beginning of days. You have just heard for yourself that Melchizedek has a mother and father. He had a beginning. Melchizedek commands Shem not to disclose his location to his father and mother. Yet when the day dawned, it seemed good to Shem to depart. Then Melchizedek wished him good speed and blessed him and said unto him, The Lord God who led us to this place be with thee and guide thee until thou come to thy own place. Melchizedek said also to him, When they inquire of thee about me, Direct them not in the way that they come not to me. And when my father and my mother ask thee about me, say to them he has left on a pilgrimage, and I do not know the place of his pilgrimage. So that when thou sayest to them, their hope of me will be cut short, and they will feel it is of no use thinking of me, so that they will not press thee and make thee come to me. Shem then departed, and returned to his kindred, while Melchizedek remained standing before the body of our father Adam, ministering unto God and worshiping him evermore. I believe the reason the book of Hebrews in the Bible said he had no father or mother 
when he started his duty as priest of the Most High and to guard the body of Adam on the earth, his father and mother couldn't look after him. He had to stand before the body of Adam, ministering continually. Also, the calling on his life was to be kept secret. Melchizedek focused on his calling all of his days. It was the angels that brought food to him and looked after him. The angels continued to take care of Melchizedek until the time of Abraham. And an angel abode with him who protected him and brought him food until the time of Abraham, the patriarch. Israelites, I hope you're starting to become acquainted with Melchizedek. You just heard Melchizedek's journey to priesthood. How did Melchizedek become the king of Salem? How does the Israelite nation's role play in the order of Melchizedek? Stay tuned for part three of the unmasking of Melchizedek. Year of God, little children, and I've overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error.